Welcome to Marlins Way, where we find Lone Depot Park. We've got a perfect day for baseball. It's the New York Mets taking on the Miami Marlins. First pitch coming your way next. And now, your 2022 Miami Marlins. All right, first pitch coming up on the hill here today, Sandy Alcantara. What do you have on him, singing? Well, this is a guy that usually turns in a very good outing. People like playing behind him. Everyone seems to be loose, and the offense tends to get going. So, you know, you look at an opposing lineup. When they see him out there in the mound, they know that he's going to compete. They don't want to let him settle in. They want to try to knock him out, get into that bullpen before he gets real comfortable. So just about set at stepping in for New York, Brandon Nimmo. The 1-1. One, one. Foul ball. The wind of the pitch. Two ball, two strike. Chisholm tosses to first. One up, one down. That accepted. The right fielder, number six, Starling Marte. Starling Marte up to hit. Nice warm day here. Good baseball weather. Does that change anything, Chris, especially for the hitters? Absolutely. Yeah. You feel so much more comfortable at the plate. You're not worried about you know, getting jammed on fastballs inside part of the plate. Uh, you can kind of be more selective instead of just looking out away so that you can get the barrel to it and that part and get on the inside part of the plate as well. Pitch misses. It's two and two. Righty delivers. Lifted in the air, right field. Garcia has this one sized up and puts the squeeze on that one. And there's two away. That is third. The shortstop, Francisco. And now it's Frankie Lindor. You talk about elite defensive players, especially in the middle of the diamond, and this guy is at the top of the list. Swing and a miss. And the count one and two. And you played behind guys, and they love having your speed out there defensively. One of the things that we talk about. Now this ball is well hit. This one's got a chance. Leaps at the wall, but can't haul it in. And he starts his afternoon off right with a double. This was a really nice swing. Didn't quite get enough behind it to get it out of here, but once it got over his head in left field, it was extra bases all the way. And now it's the polar bear, Pete Alonzo. And a 3-1 on the way. So now two on and two outs. I don't think he really wanted to pitch to him right there anyhow. So two on with two away. Here's Mark Canna. The 1-1. One, one. Gets him to chase after that one. The pitch. Stays alive. Well, lots of pitches thrown in this first inning. And it's kind of that nightmare scenario for starting pitching. But you know what? It's still early enough. He can settle in. He can get some length if he just cleans up his mechanics a little bit. Here comes a pitch. The 3-2 is off the outside edge, and that is ball four. Well, a breaking ball in that 3-2 count kind of tells you that that's the pitch he has the most confidence in right now. Just couldn't find the strike zone. Two outs, bases full. And now the veteran third baseman, Eduardo Escobar. Line drive. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And that ends the inning. It's the Mets nothing. Marlins coming up. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. Bottom of the first. And on the mound in this one, Jacob DeGrom. 
Well, he comes at hitters with a five pitch mix. So for him, it's always interesting to see how he utilizes those weapons. He may lean on one or two pitches depending on how things are going and how things are working. But if he can control four or even five of those offerings, look out hitters. It's going to be a tough day. He's really going to be able to keep those guys off balance. We go to the bottom of the first and stepping in is the speedy Jazz Chisholm. Next one misses two balls and a strike. And a pitch. Fouls one off two and two. In the air out towards right center. Nimmo glides to his left. Makes a nice running catch. One down. Batting second. No left fielder. Jorge. Jorge Soler up at the plate. On the ground to the left. Escobar with the throw to first. And the home first moving along quickly today. Two gone. The designated hitter, Garrett Cooper. And now it's Garrett Cooper up to hit. And a big swing and a miss. I'll tell you this, that's going to go on that pitcher's highlight reel. The wind and the pitch. That one not close. Two and two. A couple sliders away gets that hitter to really start looking and even leaning out over the plate. Very susceptible for the two seamer here. Let's see what he throws. Kicks and fires. Right through there. Got him. Down on strikes. And he knew it. Miami down in order. Scoreless after one. Back here in Miami. New inning getting started. Dom Smith stands in. Left-hand batter waits. And a foul ball. He needs a quick one, two, three this time around. Last inning through a lot of pitches. And a ball and two strikes. On the ground to third. Wendell gloves it. Whips it across. Leadoff man retired here in the second. Batting it. The second baseman, Jeff McNeil. And now here's Jeff McNeil. Good contact guy, good defender. No score here in the second. Lined, and that's a base hit. And that's going to get into the corner. Now he turns and heads for second. And that's a two-bagger. you got to get on your horse and get to that thing and get it back in because he's going to come barrel around first. He's going to put pressure on you. If you bobble it or you don't get there in a hurry, he's going to make you look silly and end up on second base. James McCann in now. 2-2 two -two now. Swings and misses, and there's two away. And now here's a speed threat. Outfielder, Brandon Nimmo. over for one so far. The 1-1. One -one. That one pushed foul. Man on second, two down. Ball two. I got the count. Two and McNeil two. on its second with two down. Three. 
on the ground out to short over to Aguilar and that's the third out Mets strand one we'll go to the bottom of the second no score. Back here at Lone Depot Park, Abasail Garcia up to the plate. And he deals. And a swing and a miss. Kicks and deals. And a foul ball, he stays alive. You see how the catcher wanted that pitch up and in. Wanted to try to tie him up. That's the one thing we're seeing. That high fastball, you have to get it up there because of how hitters have changed their swings. Next offering is foul back. Got him. One away. Wow, that's a tough call for the hitter, but the pitcher will take that all day long. Not quite in the strike zone, but he found a spot that the umpire is going to, at least for now, allow him to get that call. So hitters are going to have to make an adjustment, but pitchers are going to learn from those things and really try to exploit them if they can. Next pitch is inside, and the count is 3-1. and one. Left hand hitter waits. Fouls one away and now three and two. Well, he got challenged with a good fastball right there. Just couldn't catch up. And that one hit to first. And it gets by him. He kind of rolled over on this pitch a little bit, but he got enough behind it to shoot it through for a knock. And we'll take that anytime you can get him to find a hole. And now it's Jesus Aguilar. And strike two. Nothing, nothing here in the bottom of the second. Next pitch downstairs, and the count is even two and two. James Kingsley working the plate. Kingsley's pretty well respected around the league. Yeah, when you talk to players, I think consistently he is one of the guys you hear compliments about. Players appreciate the job he does back there. Yeah, and that's kind of all you can ask for, really, just a fair chance to go out and have success. Two down. Good hard fastball up in the zone right there. They look really good coming in, but so hard to get on top of as a hitter. Third baseman, Joey Wendell. Here's Joey Wendell. Kind of a throwback. No batting gloves. Next pitch is outside. That's where you want it. It's a good miss. And a 2-1 on the way. And that one a little bit high. DeGrom checks the runner. And that's ball four. Batting eight. The catcher. First and second, two down. Jacob Stallings now. And the righty deals. On the ground to third. Wide throw pulls him off the bag, and the inning still alive. Maybe just a little lack of concentration on that throw. Two out, you think you've got the play made. Guys are starting to move off the field towards the dugout, and then everyone's got to come back. Sometimes you take that throw for granted. And that's all it takes to keep the inning going. Miguel Rojas at the plate. And here it comes. There's the swing and a miss. At the belt and fires. 
Two balls, two strikes to count with two outs. Really good take, especially with two strikes and a pitch. And downstairs. Fouled off again, and it remains three and two. Right hander kicks deals. Taps softly third base side, a swinging bunt. That ends the frame. And the Marlins leave all three. We'll move to the third with no score. Top half of the third inning. Here's Starling Marte. Swing at a slow roller. Slings it across. Leadoff hitter gone in the third. Now batting. Shortstop. Francisco Lindor. Now up to hit. Francisco Lindor. Top of the third. No score. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And now two gone. Stood absolutely no chance on that slider right there. And I don't mean to laugh, but that's a tough one. I mean, pretty much a perfect strikeout pitch. I mean, it looks like a fastball middle in. Kind of has cutter action, and it just bunches you up to where you can't get your hands through and the barrel to it. And not much you can do unless you recognize the spin early and you spit on it. Line drive, makes the grab, and that'll end the inning. Down in order, go the Mets. And we are still scoreless. Back here at the ballpark, here's the second baseman, Jazz Chisholm. Next pitch has popped up. Escobar under it makes the catch and a quick out number one. Well, that was a pitch you got to crush. Unbelievable that he missed it right there. And I'm telling you, he is going to be frustrated with himself until his next at bat. Jorge Soler, the next up for the Marlins. First time up, he grounded to third. One down, base is empty. The other way, and he beats the shift. The One down. And next is the designated Garrett. hitter, Garrett Cooper. Cooper. Struck out looking at his first at bat. That missed inside. Ball two. Righty to the plate. And it's fouled away. Solaire, the runner at first with one gone in the inning. Next offering is downstairs. Recognize that changeup right out of the hand. Just spit on it. The pitch stays alive. And the right hander deals. Got him. And there's two down. Frustrating end to the at bat for the hitter, and I'm sure that's going to sit on him for a little okay. while. You want to be ready to hit the no fastball. Idea. Sometimes you can overthink you. things, and I think that was the Garcia. case right there. Next to hit, Abasail Garcia. The pitch. No yeah, right now, there. two balls and a strike. Fire. 
Swings through that one out in front that time. Next offering is down low. And the count is filled up. Swing and a miss. And that is that. Marlins leave one. And we're still knotted at zero. And welcome back as we go to the top of the fourth and stepping in for New York, Mark Canna. To third. Throws to first. And one gone in the fourth as they get the leadoff man. Now back. Wow, Singy, what a throw. We got to take another look at it, but this time with the numbers from StatCast. Yeah, Boo, that's about as good as it gets in the major leagues, man. You'll see the hardest throwing infielders reach 90 plus, so he's in the mix with the best infield arms in the game. That was a rocket of a throw right there. Eduardo Escobar, El Caballo up to him. Next offering is foul back. And a pitch. Hey, he doubled up on the off speed there. We talk about the power fastball, but he's working a little differently here. Next pitch misses way outside. Popped up to the left into foul ground. That's out number two. The batter, number two, designated hitter, Dominic Smith. Now it's Dominic Smith. The next offering misses. Now two balls and a strike. And a pitch. Here's an opportunity to do some damage and perhaps unlock this offense. 3 1 count. Be ready to turn on a fastball. The 3 1 in for a strike. Full count. The guy's going this good. He's retired seven in a row. You got to step out of the box, fake butt, do something to break it up. And he walked him. One of the things about that two out walk, the base runner over at first base is going to have a very aggressive secondary lead. So a ball down the line or into the gap will produce a two out RBI and those are the best that is if you are the offensive side of it two outs swing and a pop up Wendell has a beat on it puts the squeeze on it and that is the inning Mets leave one still no score. Welcome back. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. Stepping in, Jesus Sanchez. And a 1 1. Swing and a miss, and he waves at that one. He's pitching well, but not throwing a ton of first pitch strikes. Usually doesn't work out for success, but you can never predict baseball. And a swing and a miss. One out. Well, that's always the key to effective pitching is getting ahead in the count. And as a pitcher, it really allows you to start expanding the zone. Guys become defensive. And all of a sudden, for the hitter, that plate starts to get really wide. And what happens is, because of the pressure, you end up committing to a pitch as a batter before you recognize what it is. And that's what leads to the strikeout. Next to hit, Jesus Aguilar. And down on strikes he goes two away down well big power guy right there and generating so much bat speed it's hard to bring that to a halt once you've committed they try to check the swing just couldn't do it
Now a screamer into the outfield. Canna makes the catch, and that'll do it. And the Marlins down quietly, and we are still scoreless. Back here in Miami, ready now for the fifth inning. Here is James McCann. Swung on, belted. That's back there, on its way. And gone! An absolute blast to left. And just like that, they're out front. It's 1-0. Really great job of anticipation there. He knows he throws the sinker. That one down in the zone. You're trying to beat it to the spot it's getting to. Well, he won. Here's Brandon Nimmo. The why to kick the pitch. Strike two. Always exciting to see a leadoff home run in an inning. Kind of gets the offense fired up, and you start to expect a big inning. Next offering misses, and that's ball three. The real threats are coming up. Already given up a home run in this inning. He's going to really have to bear down. The 3 2 is off the outside edge, and that is ball four. You get a walk, and you get a walk. Everyone gets a walk, Booth. Starling Marte up now for the Mets. The 2-2. And a swing and a miss. And that's the first out. Such a challenge when a guy's got great velocity. He's throwing a slider over 90 miles per hour. You want to be ready to hit that fastball, but that late break just eats you up every time. Here's Francisco Lindor. And a swing and a miss. That's the second out. He came out of his mechanics there. Typically likes to shoot the ball the other way. But that time, a little anxious. Alonso. Here's Pete Alonso. The other way. That's a base hit. Throw in holds the lead runner at second. Two on now with two away. Pitch was in and off the plate. So hard to do anything with the pitch in that location, but somehow he got the barrel to it and hit it well. Pretty amazing. Mark Canna up now for the Mets. He's 0 for 1. The pitch. And a count 1 and 2. Two on, two outs. And now the count is even. They tried to get him to go, chase the pitch down and away, but he wouldn't bite. Kicks and deals. Out to short. Rojas handles. They get the force. Inning ends, and that stops the bleeding. One scores in the inning coming on this solo home run. It's now a 1-0 ball game. Back here at Lone Depot Park, we head to the bottom of the fifth. And now for the Marlins, Jacob Stallings. He is at the top of the game in terms of defense at the catching spot. Here's a 1-1. Fought off foul. It's so impressive because these guys have to do so much study and preparation for their pitchers, for opposing hitters, and really their number one job is to guide that staff through a ball game. And so when you also can turn it up offensively and be a force there, that is a win-win, every manager's dream.
Miguel Rojas the next up for the Marlins. The wind of the pitch. And that's outside. The pitch. Slider misses outside. Pretty easy to give up on that pitch right there. Started on the edge of the plate with the spin. You know it's going to finish well off the plate. Righty delivers. Establishing both ends of the zone is critical. Most times guys are wanting to get hitters out down, but if you can get them to look up, get a called strike, that's going to make that strike zone a lot bigger. Good plate appearance there. Able to take the walk. Well, he tried to nibble right there and just missed his spot. Hitter didn't offer at it. Now he has somebody to worry about over at first. Jazz Chisholm now. Next pitch is outside. Always tough to turn two on a speedster like this. It's even harder with him coming out of the left-handed batter's box. You really need something to hit hard on the ground that they can handle to turn two quickly. Next offering finds the zone of the count is full. Left-hand batter waits. Popped up. Escobar moving under it. And he makes the catch. And there are two down. That was a good pitch to hit right down the heart of the plate. Had pretty good timing on it. Just got underneath it a little bit and popped it up. At the plate, Jorge Soler. Really good piece of hitting last time going to the opposite field. Going to count one and two. Well, a come and get me fastball right there. He didn't look ready for the velocity. I think it'd be a mistake to throw him anything off speed right here. The next pitch misses. Two and two. And the righty deals. And a swing and a miss. And that's that. One left for Miami. They trail here. One nothing. Top of the sixth inning. And stepping in for New York, Eduardo Escobar. The wind in the pitch. And he pumps it a strike. Signs of activity in the pen for the Marlins. Lewis head getting ready to go. Blyer getting loose as well. Here comes a pitch. Right side. Rojas over to pick it up. Now the throw to first on the run. Escobar out of the play. Now that designated hitter, Dominic Smith. Dominic Smith up now for the Mets. So a foul ball makes it one and two. The wind of the pitch. And a foul ball. He stays alive. The one two. Breaking ball, and that got him. He had two strikes on him, and he hit him. Now the Marlins manager out of the dugout, and he'll make a move to the pen. Sandy Alcantara won't go any further. We'll be back in a minute with a new arm on the mound. Richard Blyer into the game. It's his job to keep his team in the game. Well, at this point in the ball game, we're talking about middle innings, and he made a little length out of this arm coming out of the bullpen. We'll see just how many outs he's able to give his skipper. Jeff McNeil stands in. And now the lefty and ball four to a board. The catcher number 43, James McCoy.
One one to McCann. On the ground, could be two. Tags the runner for one. Goes to second. Safe there. And he'll be safe at first. Now back the seventh Brandon Nimmo. And next for the Mets, Brandon Nimmo. The one one late that time and it's strike two stays alive McNeil over at second McCann on at first with two down that's ripped and this one could be extra bases coming home he'll score and they take a two run lead Picks himself up in RBI. That was a thing of beauty. He may have been a little behind the pitch, but by getting that barrel into the hitting zone early on in his swing, he was able to meet it and still shoot a line drive down the line and left. So two down, and now the right fielder, Starling Marte. Bounce to the left side. Rojas handles the chance. They take the force out, out number three. So one run in the inning on this base hit. It's now a 2-0 ball game. And welcome back. Bottom of the sixth inning. Now here's the Marlins DH, Garrett Cooper. Ball to strike. Swing and a miss, and he was fooled. It really looks like these hitters have been in between with their timing today. Good fastball, excellent slider, but they've not been able to commit to one velocity and stay there. Abasayil Garcia will hit next. Three and two now. And that's ball four. <laughs> Jesus Sanchez, the next up for the Marlins. Now these guys definitely looking for a big swing of the bat right here. Try to close that gap. But, you know, at the very least, if you could find a way to manufacture that run from first, it feels like it's really important to getting back into this ballgame. Chris, with that distraction and the speedy guy at first, He's in a favorable hitter's count. Well, if nothing else, I mean, this is a great spot for a hitter to be in. And down on strikes. Two gone now. Well, that at-bat seemed to be over as soon as it started. Three-pitch strikeout. You've got to be better at the plate right there, at least to foul something off, extend that at-bat. Aguilar. And at the plate for Miami, Jesus Aguilar. 1-1 one, one now. The count is 2 and 1. Swing and a miss as he was out front. And a pitch. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. That's his second strikeout. Marlins leave one. They trail it here 2 nothing. So they turn things over to the righty. Lewis head. And his job is to collect quick outs and keep his team within striking distance. Welcome back. Francisco Lindor comes up to the plate. Well, both sides equally as strong. So not a good time to try to turn him around with a 
relief pitcher and put him on the other side of the plate. That one in for a strike two and two. It's amazing to look up and see 88 miles per hour on that changeup. Back in the day, that was a pretty good fastball. But with high velocities these days, that speed differential is right where it needs to be. Up the middle, Rojas picks it up on the run, sends it over to first. And the leadoff hitter set down to open the seventh. Now batting. The first baseman, Pete Alonzo. Here's some real power at the plate. Pete Alonzo. The pitch. Now fly ball to right center. Garcia settles under this one. He makes the catch, and there's two down. Now batting, left fielder, Mark Canna. Here's the left fielder, Mark Canna. And he deals. And a swing and a miss. Do that fastball right by him, slightly elevated. That's a confidence boost for this guy out there on the mound. See if he continues to climb the ladder. Got him. And good work there as he gets a 1 2 3. Nothing doing for the Mets as they're unable to add to their 2 0 lead. Bottom of the inning. Here's the third baseman, Joey Wendell. And here it comes. Pulls that one foul. Next one misses. And the count's full. Now in this three ball count, down in the ball game, you've got to be very selective. Take your walk if they'll give it to you. Right-hander kicks, deals. Lined, and that's a base hit. Up next to the Marlins. Now it's the Marlins catcher, Jacob Stallings. Next offering upstairs. This one high in the air to left center. Canna right there to make the grab. And there's one down. And now the shortstop, Miguel Rojas. Singh, you talk about a guy that has all the skills. The range is really good, but the arm just stands out, and he makes all the plays. Tying run at the plate. And now two and one. And because of that big power arm, he's able to play a little bit deeper, make throws from the outfield grass all the way across the diamond, and still get a pretty good runner. That's impressive. The tying run at the plate. And that one lifted in the air, center field. Two down. The batter, number two, second baseman, Jazz Chisholm. Jazz Chisholm, the next up for the Marlins. We talk about guys with good speed, and definitely he has it. But pushing the offense aside for just a second, Chris, it's the defensive side that I think the speed factors in the most. Left-hand hitter waits. That misses. 
Three balls and a strike. Well, he gets to balls that get by most people at that position. Just really impressive because there are certain times the ball comes off the bat, automatically that team that hit it thinks that they've got a base hit or they may have extra bases, and he just takes it away. Kicks and fires. And yeah, there's ball four. Gosh, another walk in this one. Man, he is having some real issues with control. And here comes the Mets manager to the mound. Pitching change coming. Pitching change here, Seth Lugo. And he has some nasty breaking stuff. And up next for Miami, Jorge Soler. Oh, look out here. He's going to come up ready to swing in this situation. The one one. Wendell, the lead runner at second. Chisholm at first, two out of the inning. The next offering misses. The count now two and two. Strike three, got him swinging. And the inning is over. A lot of adrenaline, we can see it right there. And sometimes you just got to let it out. That's an outstanding job of taking that, executing, and getting out of a tough inning. Welcome back. And a new arm on the mound to start the eight. Sean Gunther. And he'll do his best to keep this close. Back here at the ballpark, we're at the top of the eighth, and now Eduardo Escobar. Well, on paper, it's favorable to have a fairly quick inning here with two of the three hitters he's set to face batting from the left side, same side he throws from. And a pitch. Good eye right there. Miami's bullpen with some action. Anthony Bender, the hard-throwing righty, is up and loosening. The wide to kick the pitch. And that one fouled off. He's mixing his pitches really well late on that fastball after seeing the changeup. See if he can elevate one. I think if he does, he'll get the swing and miss. And a foul ball, he stays alive. And a pitch. Stays alive. Kick Sandios. Swing and that ball smashed on a line. He can't get there. It's a base hit. Pulls into second. That's a double to start the eighth. Nice double right there. Loud contact coming off the bat. Didn't get enough air under to drive it out of here, but you'll take that swing and that result every time. And now Dominic Smith. The 1-1. One, one. Chisholm. First out in the top of the eighth. The batter number one. Second baseman. Jeff McNeil. Jeff McNeil up now for the Mets. And this is a big opportunity for him to pick up his teammate right here. The pitch. Next offering popped in the air right field and makes the grab. And there's two down. Maybe caught that one off the end just a little bit. Couldn't quite barrel it up enough to really drive it. Catcher, James McCann.
The pitch. McCann in the box with two gone and takes a look at a called strike. Two outs. So now two on and two outs. Man, that's a tough one to take on the full count, but I guess he saw it really well. It's a really nice plate appearance. So the lineup flips over. Here's the center fielder, Brandon Nimmo. Next pitch is outside. Runners on first and third, two away. At the belt and fires. Slow roller to first. He takes it on his own. That's out number three. Two left for the Mets, but they hold the two nothing lead. Ready for the bottom of the eighth. And now the DH, Garrett Cooper. All these fans definitely want to get involved in the game. All it's going to take is to get the leadoff man or even a base runner on. And a pitch. A little bit low. This hitter's looking for a fastball, but I'm not sure he's going to get one. Pitcher doesn't have to challenge him. If he feels better about his off-speed secondary stuff, then stay with it. The pitch. The two on is high. Action in the pen down there. Edwin Diaz, the anchor of the staff, is getting ready to close this one out. The 3-1. There's the strike. Pitching has been pretty dominant in this one, but you got to be careful. Not working with too big a lead. They could get right back in this ball game if you're not careful. Righty delivers. High fly ball, right field. Marte drifts towards it. Pulls it down, and he makes the catch. And there's one down. Now batting. The right fielder, Avisail. And next will be the cleanup hitter, Avisail Garcia. And the right hander deals. And Garcia gets a piece. Next offering way off the plate. Right-handed reliever. And a foul ball. He stays alive. The wind of the pitch. This one popped up. Foul ground first base side. Brings it in with a nice run and grab. Out number two. Man, he just couldn't lay off right there. Those high fastballs, they just look really good because they're eye level, but they're just about impossible to get the barrel to. Taking over on the mound for the Mets, Trevor May. And he'll work on holding this lead. And now the center fielder, Jesus Sanchez. Left hand batter waits. Swing and a miss. And he is down on strikes for the third straight at bat. Nothing doing for the Marlins. They trail things here 2 0. So the Marlins go with a new arm. Anthony Bender. Uh, this guy can bring it velocity-wise.
Back here at Lone Depot Park. Now it's the right fielder, Starling Marte. And that one is lifted in the air. Makes a nice grab at a full sprint. One away. So up next for New York, Francisco Lindor. Here's a 1-1. Rolled softly, but that goes foul. And it's even up. Here comes a pitch. Foul ball there. Stays alive. And that one fouled off. Pitcher having a pretty tough time getting that swing and miss. Third foul ball in a row. Next offering is fouled back. That one fouled off. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. And a foul ball, he stays alive. About to see the 11th pitch of the at bat here. Bounding ball here, rolls foul. Out towards right center field, Garcia under this one. Makes the catch for the out. Here's a big power threat. Pete Alonso. And one and two. Good late sink on that fastball. Out of the hand looks so good. And then by the time he gets in the hitting zone, hard to get the barrel to it. That misses the zone. Now two and two. Bounce to the right side. Aguilar over to first in time. That's the third out. Six, seven, eight scheduled to start the bottom of the ninth. It's the Mets two and the Marlins nothing. So they turn to Edwin Diaz out of the pen. And he'll feature a hard slider to work off his fastball. Bottom nine. And now for the Marlins, Jesus Aguilar. The pitch. Swing and a miss. And now two and two. Righty to the plate. And that one in the air center field. Nimmo under it. And there's one down. Now the third baseman. Joey and the batter now, Joey Wendell. The pitch. And a count one and two. Swing and a ground ball out to short. Sends it across the first. And the Marlins with just one out left. Now that catcher, Jacob Stallings. Now it's the Marlins catcher, Jacob Stallings. This guy, one of the best defensive catchers going. You talk about framing, the ability to block, catch, and throw. He is at the top of the game. 
really good athlete and many times you talk about you know the feet of infielders this catcher as well really quick feet he's able to recognize the pitch see the trajectory and get into a spot where he can block those balls and keep them from going to the backstop 2-2 two -two now and a swing and a miss and that is the ball game well, a low-scoring ball game in this one. Two-nothing game, few errors, pretty clean. That's kind of what you want to see in terms of defense and pitching. A couple of runs was all it took to get the W today. Two-nothing, your final here in this one. For Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show, I'm John Chambi. Thanks for joining us.